Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie and welcome back to Secondhand Sickness. <laughs> So today I'm spending the day at a small town called Norrskedika and this is about an hour or 30-40 minutes from me and I've been here before and basically every Saturday during the summer they have this big car boot sale which uh, I have actually made quite a few finds at and I really like because it's much more countryside than the usual place I go to which means that it's usually more interesting finds in terms of vintage stuff and it's usually not that pricey so it's gonna be really interesting to check out and see what we can find so yeah i'm just really excited so let's just go around and hit the table shall we death has come to your little town sheriff you can either ignore it or you can help me to stop it welcome to the desert of the real. Each year we spend good money on these things. Okay. All right, then we're gonna go sell a bone density scanner. How about that? Relax. We got everything in this mug, man. Look at this. VHS. <gasps> get that. VHS. Is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Har du för den? 150. 150. Tjena! Har du lite tidningar för mig, va? Är Vad fan! Vad fan har du stigit också? Ja då! Jag ska köra den! Är det bra? Ja, det är så vanligt igen! Ja! Jaha! Och du då? Vad får du? Jo då! All right, we got seven canisters of CN20. So we roll them in there and nerf gas the whole fucking nest. It's worth a try, but we don't even know if it's going to affect it. Look, let's just bug out and call it even, okay? What are we talking about this for? I say we take off and loop the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Fucking A. Oh, hold on, hold on one second. Is this the end? Of course not. It's only the beginning. Well, that's basically it for me today. I made quite a few finds and now we're just gonna get back in the car. Or, well, it's not it for me entirely in the video because I'm now gonna put all my stuff back into the car. And then we are actually going to drive back and I'm going to check out all the finds once I get back to the house. So yeah, let's just jump to the car. Now I drive real fucking fast, so keep up. And we're gonna take a look at what I found at the car boot sale. And everything is fucking mess, so I know where to go. Okay, let's just go check out the stuff in here. I think 
Okay. So let's go ahead and check out these two bags. And uh, I'm turning on the flash now just because the lighting in here isn't the best. So hopefully it looks okay. Now I'm going to start with this one, which was my first find of the day. And this is a VHS on the Swedish label, which is called Walter's Video. This is Defiance. And I wasn't really sure if I actually had this, but I don't think I do. And if I do, well, then I guess I got a duplicate. So I wouldn't say that this is like a super collectible tape or anything, but uh, it was well worth the price of 10 Swedish crowns. So uh, yeah, the label seems to have fallen off, but no biggie, it's at least in there. So that's the first one. So that's 10 Swedish crowns. Next up, I have this stack of actually three old vintage film canisters. And these are empty film canisters, but I really like the look of them. Here's one for Kodak film. They're quite thick. And just check the back at least. We get Eastman Plus X. And, you know, I'm not a, you know, film format nerd or anything. I just thought these looked kind of cool. I figured they would find a nice little way to display them in the movie room and I also think they could actually make for some really cool custom boxes if I want to put like a DVD in here or make like a you know sort of custom limited edition for something it's not like I commonly do that but it's one of those things which I always think that I you know I should do and I have some ideas for some film canister themed films that I think would work really well in this style or in this particular type of case so i got three of those and they are branded a bit differently here's one from dupont and there's the back and then we got another one from kodak this is kodak limited london so that's those three and i paid i believe it was 50 crowns for all three uh, she originally wanted 20 swedish crowns per case but uh, I told her, like, can I give you 40? And she's like, no, but 50 is okay. So, yeah. So, got them down with 10 Swedish crowns. So, we got 10 Swedish crowns, and then we got 50 for that stack there. And next up, we can look at this, which is something I've been keeping my eye on or sort of looking for for quite a few years. And this is a vintage style ammo belt or I don't know what you would call them, but I think you carried ammo in these. It is a leather belt, like an army issue, which comes with these little pockets. I tend to see these uh, quite a bit in the past. I see them every once in a while, but I was never able to buy one because usually they cost way too much. Uh, but the seller wanted 150 Swedish crowns for this, which I think is pretty fair. You know, that's roughly what I think they're worth. It's not a steal, but it's a reasonable price. So I was really happy to get this because I've always really wanted one of these. Not really sure what I'm going to do with it. Might just be like a fun little cosplay item to use. If I want to do like a Mad Maxian type design or something. But in any case, pretty cool item to get. And next up, we got my second to last thing. Which was a completely spontaneous purchase, which I just stumbled over. And I think it's so cool. It's actually... A vintage style, I say vintage style for everything because everything is vintage, but yeah, this is, feels very nostalgic to me, uh, or like a very sort of nostalgic type item, and it is an original hamburger telephone, <laughs> which is just, I love this, you know, I can't use this anymore because like the phone line, the phone network or whatever is disconnected. So it's not like I can plug this into the wall and actually use it. I do still have like the original plugs in the wall because it's quite an old house. But there's, you know, it doesn't matter if I plug it in. I won't be getting a, a dial tone or anything. But I mean, I just wanted to get this because it's such a cool classic vintage item. It's like a very sort of cheesy, pardon the pun, design. And uh, yeah, I love it. According to the seller, this should actually still work. But I don't really have a way of testing it I suppose I could plug it in maybe I don't know if I would get like a static or something but in any case 
really really cool vintage style phone love it so i got that and this was so cheap i picked this up for 20 swedish crowns which is like nothing it's just a couple of bucks so that's really cool i really expected he would want more and it was like he's like what are you offering i'm like i don't want to say too much so i'm just like i don't know what what do you think and he's like eh, 20 i'm like yeah 20 is fine so that was really cool very very good price i think for that and last but not least it's actually a stack of magazines and I just want to be clear about the fact that these magazines weren't like a random find. I essentially got in touch with one of the seller at random because I've been to this place before. I was there like a couple of years back and met up with this guy who sold me some stuff. I forget exactly what it was, but it's, I tend to see him at these places. And so I just randomly messaged him because I felt like, you know, I really want to buy something and find something fun. And so I messaged him like a couple of months ago, just saying like, so hello, we met at the flea market such and such a couple of years ago. And I was just curious if you have anything for sale, like some vintage erotica or, you know, something satanic or videotapes, whatever, you know, the kind of stuff I look for. And he's like, well, I do have some movies. And he showed me like some later DVD porn stuff, which I felt like, you know, that's just, I'm sorry, that's not, not of interest to me. But then he, we sort of messaged back and forth. And then he's like, oh, I actually have this, which he was like, I don't know if you would be interested, but I have these. And he sent me some pics. And I can't really show you these in total detail, but I'll show you some of them. So this is a stack of Swedish. I think most of them are Swedish. Sorry, this was hard to take out of the box. Here are some Swedish magazines. And this is about 14 or 15 magazines. And these are 1970s type uh, gay porn mags. <laughs> And uh, yeah, for the record, in case you're new to the channel or whatever, I'm not gay, I'm not bisexual, I'm just regular straight guy, but I do collect vintage erotica, and I'm basically interested in all types of erotica. I don't have too many gay items, because quite honestly, it's quite unusual to find vintage gay items, because it wasn't, you know, it definitely wasn't as common as your more sort of generic and, uh, I suppose, uh, heterosexual uh, type of material. Like I have a whole bunch of stuff from like 70s, 80s, even 60s at some point. But I have like one or two gay Super 8 titles, uh, but I don't have any magazines. So I was really curious about this pile. And he sent me just pics of the covers and I felt like, you know, I really, really want to get these. I wouldn't say that I overpaid for them, but uh, they ended up becoming quite costly. So I paid 400 Swedish crowns for the entire lot, which is 14 magazines. And that might seem like a whole lot of money to spend on vintage gay magazines when I'm not gay. But I know I have some friends who might like these, who have a different sexual orientation. But I actually want to keep most of them, because I just feel like it's such an interesting and strange historical document. Not that there's anything strange about homosexuality, I'm just saying that it was a different time and with that these are actually quite rare and quite unusual and for the time I would say that it was to some extent sort of a little bit controversial because you know we viewed homosexuality or the society viewed homosexuality quite differently back then. But yeah let's just go ahead and check out a bit of what I can show you. So here's the first one, which is called Viking, and it says Swedish HS uh, magazine, which I suppose would be Swedish homosexual magazine. And here's a second one, which is called Eos. Uh, ho I don't know how you translate this because like the wording back then and the wording now, but it's like, yeah, it, it's also gay themed. Feels very sort of Tom of Finland based on the cover, but... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna flip through this a little bit and I guess I'm just gonna edit out in case I flip something which you're not supposed to see, so just to show you a little bit. Okay. 
it's uh, primarily black and white and there are you know I can show you uh, the pages which are uh, hardcore but believe me that these are very hardcore magazines I mean we are talking full-on you know intercourse blowjobs whatever uh, what you would expect from a hardcore gay magazine even looking at it like today like you know don't expect that this would be you know less hardcore <laughs> than what we have now and i mean you can i can tell you that i'm not gonna flip open this all the way because yeah that cover is very uncensored so just show you a little bit it's uh yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna do this very censored because i don't want to get in trouble with youtube so and so i'm actually gonna move past that one because it's way too uncensored there's another old vintage cover and this is uh, a magazine which is just called Killen, which is the guy. And uh, it, yeah, it actually says the guy, and then it says the magazine with, with suck or with blow. I don't know. It's it's hard because it translates quite differently in Swedish. Let me just flip this open, and oh yeah, here we actually have one of these somewhat classic. Tom of Finland drawings, so I'm gonna censor it because I know people might be sensitive to this, but I'm imagining this is Tom of Finland because it looks very Tom of Finland-ish. So let's just see if we can see anything else that's worth looking at. And I'm just doing this off screen now so I can get some idea of what I can show you and not. But I mean, it's hard to show you anything in any kind of detail because that would violate all kinds of things. So uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and show you some of the covers so you can get an idea of what they look like. But yeah, like I mentioned, very hardcore stuff. There's some nipples being shown here, but I'm gonna, you know, figure that people are okay with that. So here's some other magazines, which is called Revolt. And the full title is Revolt Against Sexual Prejudice. Which I think is a really cool title. And these are from 1971. Uh, this one is from 1974. The next one is also from 71. And uh, I don't know, it just feels like a very sort of edgy magazine for the time. Seeing as, you know, just like with the title, Revolt Against Sexual Prejudice, which I think is crazy and really cool. Then again, this was the 70s. I'm not really well read up on how homosexuality was good in the 70s but i would imagine that you know these magazine uh, might have been considered quite controversial but uh, yeah we're not gonna look at these in any kind of major detail but i still want to show you the covers just so you can get an idea of the style let's so just pan to the right a little bit see if i can find anything of interest that I can show you but then again <laughs> okay I, <laughs> I'm not gonna show you this full image and nothing against men with bananas but come on uh, I mean I know this is not my sexual orientation but I don't know to me <laughs> Okay, people might, there might be people who get off on this, but I just figured that guy, to me, even, you know, I can be open and say like, oh, that's a, that's a, you know, attractive looking male, but that guy with a banana didn't feel very attractive. So, let me just, hold on for a second, I'm gonna see if I can find anything else worth showing. Ah, it's basically too uncensored, so let's just look at the cameras. So there's another one of the Revolt mag from 1976. And here is another one, a bit more suggestive. God, I wonder if YouTube is gonna be okay with me putting this up, I hope so. I mean, I don't wanna get in trouble for showing nudity, so I'm taking very much precautions to censor everything. And hopefully people out there won't get offended. I don't think you should be because, I mean, this is just homosexuality. Come on, people, we're living in 2021. Let's be open about it. 
And lastly, we have uh, this one, which I think looks kind of cool. It's from 1977, another issue of Revolt magazine. Love the fact that these guys are sitting around leading this other magazine, which is called Manpower, which feels very sort of, I don't know, uh, kind of cliche, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so we might end with this one. Back cover photo of gentleman on a beach. And uh, yeah, that is basically it for my stack of vintage gay magazines. And like I said, these were 400 in total, so I will probably sell a few of them, but I will definitely keep most of them. And we got the ammo belt, we got the burger phone, we got the movie canisters, and we got the VHS. And that is basically it for the entire content of my bags. So yeah, that is basically it from me today. I really hope people don't get too offended by the little stack of magazines there. Hopefully you have watched my channel for long enough that you know about the content and don't really feel that this is a big deal. And if you do get offended by the fact that I'm showing you old 1970s gay magazines which are actually censored and I'm not really showing anything, just grow up. It's not that big of a deal. So thank you very much for watching and as usual, hope to see you all next time.